Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Themed Office Hours with Jess. Today, I'll be talking about what I did to really maximize my studying when I was studying for my written qualifying exam. So these tips are essentially good for studying for any kind of closed book exam, I, although I will be talking specifically about my experience for the um, doctoral written exam that I had to take. Um, but I do want to say that like one of my most hated things, like top of the list, is studying for a closed book exam. It's so nerve wracking, so stress inducing. I hate memorizing material that I feel like I, I can just look up on my day to day uh, life. So um, just want to say that, you know, I definitely struggled through this process. And this is sort of what I learned and what I did. Um, that sort of worked for me in getting through this painful process of studying for this closed book exam. So a little context about what my um, doctoral exam was like. Um, I took it at the end of my second year um, when we were done with all of our coursework, um, and it was a full day timed closed book exam. And essentially anything on a required coursework for the past two years was fair game to be on the exam. So it was a lot of sort of um, health behavior um, and social epi theories, as well as um, some methods, um, as well as econometrics um, models. The way our exams are graded is um, you can have four possible scores and honors, pass or marginal pass, and those three are all considered passing scores or you fail. And if you fail, you have to wait a whole year to retake it. So sort of like a very high stakes exam in terms of like, you know, most people do pass the exam, but in that like off chance you're that one person, like it's, it's a pretty, the system is not set up for you to be able to kind of recover quickly from this, unfortunately. So my first sort of study tip that I would like to say is really emphasizing the importance of a study schedule and creating one early on. Um, I kept my spring course load extremely light because I was still having to take classes that semester. So I really front loaded my classes so that I took most of them in the first quarter or even some over the winter break because my school allows that. Um, so that way, when it got to the second half of my spring semester, I only had class on Fridays. So it really felt like I just could plan out my days a lot better. And there just wasn't like chunks of time when I was like having to go to class um, while also squeezing studying in. Um, I didn't study before spring break. I did a little bit of light reviewing, but it honestly wasn't that helpful. And I do think that like, if you start studying too early for these types of exams, you will burn out. So figure out what that means for you. And um, if you can enjoy your spring break, you should enjoy it because then it's like a lot of hard work after that. Also, it's important to still keep some side projects going, like side research projects. Like you don't want to just like suddenly drop everything and only study for the exam. Like your life shouldn't just go on pause. Um, I will say, though, you don't want to say yes to too many new projects that come up during your study time because that might be harder to manage. So keep some stuff going, but say no to new things. Um, unless it's like a really good, I mean, case by case basis, but overall that would be my advice. And then of course, make a study schedule. I'll get into that now. Um, so I like to create sort of two types of study schedules. One is sort of a more macro, like week to week, what am I gonna do? And then a more, sort of daily, like when I get to a week, then I'll make sort of daily to-do lists. Like, okay, these are the actual like actionable, tangible bite-sized items I'm gonna do every day to sort of uh, match that weekly goal or the weekly topic. It's also important to, and I've said this in a lot of my videos, to figure out what hours of the day you study best. For me, I found out that that really is, you know, in between that like lunch and dinner time in the afternoon. That's when I feel like, you know, I can really chunk off that time, not really have that many meetings and just study. And it's important, um, I think, to have consistency. Um, at least for me, it like meant more to do a couple hours of studying every single day versus like blocking off one full day to do research or sorry, to do the studying. And then maybe like, then you go back to a couple days of regular and you don't study. And then 
do another full day of study. Like, I don't know. For me, it's just better for every day to just do a couple of hours and have that consistency. So here's an example of sort of what I mean by doing a weekly schedule. So kind of mapping out, okay, how many weeks do you have between now and the day you take the exam? And then what topics or kind of key things are you gonna do each of those weeks to get there? And then um, I would recommend making an hourly schedule. Um, so this is a screenshot from my GCAL. Um, this is what my Mondays through Fridays sort of would look like. So I would have generally scheduled all my meetings in the morning. I like to do this. Um, I then work out for about you know two-ish hours. Um, that includes like showering and whatever. Um, and then I have a nice long lunch break. Usually we use this time to get some work done too. That's not qual studying. And then I would have like a big block in the afternoon where I would have uninterrupted study time and then end my day with dinner and then not do any work until the next day. So again, that was my sort of Monday to Friday schedule. And then on the weekends, I would do something fun in the morning before studying, but kind of generally still keep to this hourly schedule. So um, when I was studying for my um, qualifying exam, I was actually home in California um, during COVID. So I would like just go to the beach in the morning and like go for a walk there and get outside and, you know, enjoy the fact that I was in Southern California and not Boston, Massachusetts. Um, and, um, that just was like a nice way to kind of still be able to enjoy the weekend, get out of the house. Um, but then I still, um, set, spent like a good three to four hours studying for the exam in the afternoon when I would come home. My second big tip is group study. This is so important um, to have organized group study time, especially with your cohort um, or the people that you're taking the exam with, um, to kind of together go through that weekly schedule of topics. Um, my group actually did teach-ins, so every week we took turns, um, or each one of us was in charge of like leading one of the weekly topics, and then we would actually create a summary lecture that we would then give to our, um, the rest of our cohort to go over that topic. So you were essentially like in charge of like the review material that week. And then someone else would then draft a practice question that sort of matched, again, the topic that we were covering for that week. So we were very sort of systematic in the way we did this and it ended up working out really well. It kept us organized, motivated, and we had a lot of structure. So we didn't just like come to these group study sessions with like no, nothing planned. And um, we really maximized, you know, every minute that we spent together and didn't waste any time. Um, we also met with faculty um, that taught some of our core courses together, which was useful. And then once we got closer to the ex actual exam date, we did bi-weekly mock exam days, I think on the weekend. So either on Saturday or Sunday, we would just block sort of the first half of that day off and then just for eight hours like simulate what it would be like to take the exam sit in the actual desk we were going to take the exam at and just again kind of try to get to duplicate that environment so we would be ready when the day came and like know what it would feel like to actually go through the whole exam from start to finish um we also did a lot of passive Zoom co-working. So not just times where we met and like taught each other material, but just times when we would just get together and study and have our computers on um, and Zoom on and you know hold each other accountable, but not necessarily be actively talking to one another. Another thing that group study is great for is to vent and be each other's support group. Um, it was also just, you know, you're all going through this together and it's nice when, you know, you're having kind of a stressful day and your friend can be there to be like, Jessica, you got this, you know, and that's kind of just what you need sometimes to hear from your friends. So again, another reason why group study is very important. Uh, my next tip is to take practice tests. I feel like this was like the key of me sort of going from zero to a hundred in terms of being ready for the exam. Um, at least for us, we were given all of the um, past exams, like going back, like I think 15 years or something. So I just did as many of those as possible. So I understand if like this is might not be a resource for you. I don't know if your department will offer sort of previous year's exams, 
Um, and if they don't, you can always kind of create mock practice questions for yourself. I just think it's really important, especially when studying for a closed book exam, that you practice answering questions without looking at your notes and practice that recall because I remember doing my first practice exam, I like couldn't define any of the theories or the key terms and I was so discouraged. But the thing is the second and third time I um, went back and did another pra practice exam, I was shocked that I suddenly like could remember everything. So really it's just practicing that recall can be so helpful. My next tip is to pace yourself. I think this is really important because it can get really easy to feel overwhelmed and then want to kind of overstudy. Um, so don't overstudy. Um, you will burn out. I definitely burned out even though I was pacing myself. Um, so it's important to take days off. I think you have to remember that you've been learning this material for years. So it's not like you're studying stuff fresh and you're having to spend a lot of time learning it. Like you're just sort of doing a very deep review of stuff you've already learned and you are very capable and very smart and can take days off and still be okay for the exam. It's important to still enjoy your hobbies, like to still work out and get outside. I definitely kept that as a priority. Um, sleep, um, still get enough sleep and eat well. Again, this is a marathon and not a sprint. So in terms of passive studying, so I started doing this as I got closer to the exam because I just needed to change up the pace of what I was doing. So I started listening to a lot of podcasts or watching a lot of YouTube videos um, while I was like going for walks or um, eating my dinner as sort of a way to passively and like through osmosis or whatever, get that information in my brain without me having to like actively read or write or whatnot. So I kind of like rabbit holes into looking for any and all um, YouTube videos that had anything to do with stuff we might get, um, get tested on. Like there was a rumor that my exam topic might be about COVID and like disparities in health. So I just like found every possible like YouTube video that even was put out by Harvard too, to like try and learn about, you know, what is it, what angle could they be trying to like address this at? And I was trying to watch all those videos. So um, maybe I went a little too overboard with this, but it was still a fun way to kind of change up my pace of studying. And then I know some people like to actually record themselves talking. Um, like if we have to memorize what social cognitive theory and all of its constructs are, you know, I've heard that people will record themselves like reading out the definition and then each of the constructs and then defining each of the constructs and then have that as like an audio file that they listen to when they go for walks or longer drives or whatnot. I personally didn't do this and I don't know if I could listen to my own voice in such a boring manner for so long, uh, but hey, this works for some people and it's a great way to make the videos is just practicing in itself and then being able to then listen to it again could be useful. Sorry, my PowerPoint's having some issues. I don't know why. Um, but my last tip, we're almost done, is to just aim for the past. Like, again, I don't know how your institution does things, but for us, like, no one really, like, see, only my advisor sees my grades, I think. Um, so really, like, there's no difference between an honors, a pass, or a marginal pass, or whatever. So just aim for the past. When you're applying to jobs in the future, no one is going to ask you how you did on your qualifying exam. They just care that you passed and you ended up ultimately graduating. So, you know, just keep that in mind. You don't need to be perfect. You just need to pass. And that should sort of help you with like keeping that school life balance as you're studying for this exam. And that's, that's it. Thank you so much. Um, good luck to you all who are probably studying for some kind of exam right now. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.